Next uh, speaker is Dr. Sidapi Bairadi, and he represents uh, several leading American institutes and universities. And the title is on the screen. Um, firstly, I would like to thank organizers uh, for giving us the opportunity to present some of our recent data. So what I'm going to do in next uh, 10 or 15 minutes, um, basically I'm going to talk about a uh, little bit of uh, shifting gearing, how to protect the gut and uh, uh, um, the, how the, some of the integrin play a role in, uh, in the gut and uh, damaging HIV HIV infection. Uh, so Jason uh, basically elucidated how important to protect the gut because it's just in the microbes and then now we know that gut is the major site of HIV or HIV infection, so that's where uh, we trying to address some of our uh, um, uh, uh, questions regarding that. So, um, so we are interested in uh, one of the molecule called as uh, alpha-4 beta-7 integrin. So this integrin basically expressed in uh, activated CD4 T cells uh, where that receives and traffic to the gut-associated lymphoid tissues and which is a play key role in HIV or HIV pathogenesis. So such cells are commonly express uh, uh, surface um, protein integrin called as alpha-4 beta-7, uh, which functions as a gut homing receptor. And this can uh, happen in a different uh, uh, combinations in the cell, like I see here, like it can be do like alpha-4 beta-7 or it combine alpha-4 beta-1 or beta-7 or alpha E beta-7. But we are interested uh, mostly in the dimeric form of alpha-4 beta-7. The reason is, as you see in this picture, in the gut, so this integrin alpha-4 mediates the warming to the retention of lymphocyte to pair patches on mesentic lymph nodes and gut lamina propria. And um, as we know that the bulk of the CD4 T cells killing during acute infection occurs in the lamina propria as shown here, uh, and then again during the acute infection, the pair patches and missing lymph nodes are the primary sites of viral replication. And so that's the idea. So this molecule involved is basically uh, in a trafficking and therefore uh, it's very interested to, to understand the biology and uh, um, uh, this molecule. So with this and a little bit uh, um, on our introduction, so our central hypothesis, uh, basically the way we think is protection of the gut-associated lymphoid tissues and the gastrointestinal tract during the acute HIV HIV infection will provide the window period to generation of more effective disease, protective immune responses, and we think the facilitate host virus accommodation. So I can talk on this uh, long hours, but uh, really we don't have time, but anybody interested, we can discuss that uh, later on the talk. Uh, the idea here is basically once virus get into the body, it's no way we can eliminate. So all what we're thinking is we should have maybe therapies and things that how to accommodate we can live with uh, in a worst virus symbiosis manner. That's kind of where uh, our thinking going on at uh, this direction. So. Um, uh, on this direction, uh, we recently shown that um, targeting this alpha for beta integrin is reduces mucosal transmission in a semen immunodeficiency virus uh, model, and we shown that it protects gut associated lymphoid tissues from infection. And these studies basically we elucidated. Um, uh, so significantly, when we t uh, target this molecule, it reduces the gut tissue viral loads and it protects at least 50% protection of the animals against repeated low dose intravaginal challenge with SIV MAC251 virus. Um, um, where we set up these experiments because in the worldwide, most of the infections occurs via intravaginal mode of transmission. That was the idea. And then we shown that we went ahead and shown that alpha-4 beta-7 treated animals maintained high peripheral CD4 T cell numbers. And then, the, and then what we went on shown in this paper, uh, basically we shown that two ways which this molecule, uh, the integrin treatment may have reduced the efficiency of transmission, either interference with the CD4 T cell trafficking or it reducing the number of activated T cells available for the HIV, HIV infection. So with this uh, background, uh, so the question was, um, 
whether how this is trafficking, this happens very early on infection or it's later on the infection. To do that, basically we set up a new kind of experiment where we're looking at two different sets of like acute infection and chronic infection. So in case of acute infection, so we gave a group of monkeys with the anti alpha 4 beta 7 and then uh, the other group we just treated with IgG as a control group and then as shown here, uh, we always give the treatment to three days before the virus inoculation and three days and we give truck load of antibody to the monkeys like a 50 milligrams per kg and then um, you know big zero as shown here virus is infected and uh, monitored like very just five five weeks and then we uh, did a lot of imaging studies I'm going to talk about that a little bit later and then we done like a uh, week two and then uh, again week four imaging and then we sacrifice the monkeys at week five to understand you know uh, where is this uh, virus is goes into the different tissues and compartments and then similarly um, in the chronic pace, we have done similar. The antibody was given every three weeks uh, to maintain the, uh, the amount of antibody in the system. And then again, we sacrificed monkeys at uh, week 16. Um, so I'm going to show you some of the data on these studies. So here, to show you the plasma viral loads in the both acute and chronic infection, as you see in the acute infection, uh, here red lines represent uh, basically IgG treated animals and green lines represent the monkeys which received anti-alpha-4 beta-7 and the same here. So what you see here is there is a little bit differences in the acute viral loads but they are not statistically significant. Um, and the similarly in case of in the chronic phase where we have done uh, multiple load of challenges and that time there is a delay in the infection but once it gets infected there is no difference between the peak viral loads. Um, um, on this, but in contrast, when you look at it to the gut tissue viral loads, as you see here in the jejunium, ileum, or colon, different tissues, uh, you see here the treated group is very low um, or negligible amount of viral loads present as compared to the control animals. Same case in case of ileum, um, you see that uh, control animals very high viral loads, and uh, similarly in the colon, uh, suggesting that this antibody helps to protecting the uh, gut viral tissue viral loads. And then this is more profound in case of when you looked at uh, lymphoid tissue viral loads, as you see at the spleen, again there is a protective role this antibody plays. But when you look at lymphoid tissues, uh, most interestingly the internal iliac lymph node and colonic lymph node, you see the opposite effect. The treated groups have the higher viral loads as compared to the colonic um, uh, control animal, same thing in the colonic lymph node. And uh, the other tissues, you see that uh, there is a low viral loads in the anti alpha 4 beta cell treated animals. This suggesting that somewhat this antibody mediates the trapping in the virus, either it trapped the virus in the place is not allowing the cells to migrate or um, uh, it's vice versa. So clearly, honestly, we are working right now the mechanisms to understand what's really is playing a role. But all we are trying to document is uh, at this stage here is there is a differential tissue targeting with the treatment of this antibody. So to summarize this part, cells residing within the GIT in a general had a lower proviral DNA loads in the anti alpha 4 treated animals as compared to the control IgG treated animals. Differences in the levels of lymph nodes depends on the region of the body which lymph node reside. And these data suggest that administration of uh, uh, this molecule must lead to change the tissue localization of CD4 T cells and by implication the localization of virus infected cells. So that's where some of our studies is targeted to understand now CD4 T cells especially in the live image technique um, uh, so that's uh, ongoing experiments and then furthermore these findings supports that the view of anti alpha 4 beta 7 monoclonal antibody induces changes in compartmentalization of the virus and the virus inf infect replicating infected cells so uh, we've shown that in the molecular techniques, basically this is a different happen, but the question is, so we cannot sacrifice animals every week and look at that. Therefore, in our group, we recently um, 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 developed a novel Im body immunopet um, technique, basically it's called the uh, PET-CT technique, where using this technology, we could um, 
uh, um, monitor live animals imaging, basically in the viral, with treatment, with not treatment, and then we use this technology basically to apply the same setting back, and then the way this technology work, I'm just giving you brief, briefly, basically we use one of the SAV GP120 antibody, it's a very, um, you know, uh, pretty good antibody, this one, and then it's a recognized majority of the SAV uh, um, clone, and then we use a copper, and then we uh, prepare the PET image probing, and then using a um, CT chromatography, we could monitor the infection live imaging, where the infection can happen, and uh, how long it's could happening, and then which tissues the virus can replicate. So we basically applied this technique to the same set of animals, and then we, we track the imaging, and here is the data to show you in case of acute infection, so where is the localization and quantification of SIB. As you see here, this is the animal, so we have done the imaging two different time points as shown here, um, the anti-alpha-4 beta-7 treated animal and this is IgG treated animal. I'm showing you the again representative examples uh, here uh, to minimize the data. And as you see here, there is a very less signal as compared to the control animal and then it is quantified here as a different time point, different tissues like colon, small bowel, colonic lymph node, and uh, most of them what I described earlier. And interestingly, what you see that, again, uh, there is a, um, 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 uh, uh, there is a considerable differences between what we see in the um, viral loads and here, most of the places where antibody treated, you see the reduction of where the red line, red uh, bars you see here, the reduction of uh, viral loads as compared to the IgG treated animals. But we did not see much differences in the case of some of the lymph nodes, like especially the auxiliary lymph node and things like that where we have seen the same thing in the uh, gut viral loads. And also more profoundly when you're looking at the colon, you see here, Again, this is the animal looking at the upper and lower. There is a less reduction of uh, the signal as compared to the IgG treated animals as shown here. And this is the average as you show that there is a remarkable differences in the imaging technique and uh, pick this up. And similarly, we also looked at so how soon this imaging technique we could uh, uh, do this, like we have done like different time points, like day seven, day 14, day 35, and as you see here on the different um, uh, tissues and organs, you can see the marked differences. We could use this technology to really image the animals uh, live with a different treatment with that. And same thing we have looked at in case of chronic pace, where we compared again a comparison between um, this anti alpha 4 and antibody versus IgG, and we see the similar um, trend. I see again, cut is the major target, as I said, this antibody really protects. And you see here, uh, this is the uh, animal RL Cetol is IgG treated here as compared to the uh, here RRN, uh, this, RD, this animal, uh, where anti alpha 4 beta 7 less signals, and similarly, the another animal shown here and the quantification was shown here and suggesting that there is a marked differences either acute or chronic pace especially with respect to the gut uh, and then this antibody kind of mediates compartmentalization of the virus um, uh, either trafficking or anything to summarize the overall the pet ct based data presented here uh, supports the tissue specific compartmentalization. The major differences between control IgG treated animals and the anti alpha 4 versus animals appears to be predominant located in the colon, large intestine, as compared to the control animals, the small ball, in case of. Uh, um, a treated animal. The major differences again appear to spleen, colon, small bowel, and various lymph node tissues. And interestingly, we also picked up a really a lot of signals in case of uh, um, the NALT. That is one of the probably thinking going on, could be one of the reservoir site for a HIV SIV infection. Um, so, uh, but we are still working on that uh, um, to really understand that. So, again, the differences with the GAT on the spleen appear to be more pronounced in week three. Uh, then week two, because as we know, the virus takes some time to replicate in the spite of similar plasma viral load dynamics at week two and three post-infection. And again, the differences in the levels of PSA were reduced by the administration of uh, anti alpha 4 beta 7 monoclonal antibody and the GAT appears to be relatively less seeded with the virus this early time point. Therefore, we think that so we should have strategies to protect the gut. Uh, probably uh, it, it reflects to the, um, the disease progression and things like that. That's some of the studies on ongoing. So with that, uh, basically, um, I would like to thank several people involved in these studies, uh, especially Aptab Ansari, and then our, our team in the lab, and then again, Francois and Phil 
Mass Antigolo. Uh, they are very key to develop the imaging technology. And then again, we have a great help from the NIH, and we collaborate with uh, Jim and Claudia and the Pochis, uh, Tony Pochis lab and funding from NIH. With that, um, I'm happy to take any questions, and thanks for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Bararelli. We have time for a couple of questions. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Hi, Peter Hunt uh, from San Francisco. Really terrific uh, talk and really cool imaging uh, technology. And I'm, I'm wondering if you've um, uh, been able to use that in the setting of antiretroviral uh, treatment and whether the sensitivity is sufficient to actually visualize where the active uh, reservoir is. Right. Uh, actually, we did that. All of the studies were published in uh, Nature Methods paper back. Uh, definitely, uh, we are using.